ever pondered how life might transform in the millennial reign of Christ? Picture a world where the heavens dissolve with a great roar, where elements melt in the fervor of intense heat. This is a world as described by Apostle Peter in his second epistle, chapter 3. He tells us of a day that will arrive like a thief in the night, a day when both earth and the works within it will be engulfed in flames. As we gaze upon this new world, barren and devoid of its once lush vegetation and vast water bodies, we must ask ourselves, how should we conduct ourselves in anticipation of this day? Peter urges us to embrace holy conduct and godliness, to look forward and hasten the coming of the day of God, for it is on this day that the heavens will dissolve, consumed by fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. In the midst of this stark landscape, Christ will arrive. He will be the beacon of light in a world without a sun or moon. His presence will illuminate the entire earth, <coughs> uh, a testament yeah. to his uh, role. At right, hold on a second. <laughs> what, you heard that? You heard that, right? All right, first of all, let's strike one. Okay? Strike one. Uh, let's do it this way. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. Psalm 89, verse 37, It shall be established forever <coughs> as the moon, and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. F established forever as the moon. And so there's no reason to believe there will be no moon. Now, Let's go to Revelation 21 and 22. Let's start 21. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. It doesn't say there is no sun, there is no moon. Revelation 22. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. All right, again, no mention that there won't be a sun and a moon. All right, and that's that's important because you're going beyond what the scripture says when you say there is no sun or moon. In the midst of this stark landscape, Christ will arrive. He will be the beacon of light in a world without a sun or moon. His See, presence. That's, that's not what the scripture says. It doesn't say without a sun and moon. It says there's no need. No need for the sun and the moon. Huge difference. Now, remember this verse here. If for I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. And here we have an example of somebody adding and even essentially taking away the words of this book. Presence will illuminate the entire earth, a testament to his role as the light of the world. It's a mystery indeed, but one that promises there will be no darkness during this thousand year reign. Uh, and what see, about again, again, that's not in the Bible anywhere. First of all, the only mention of this thousand year period is Revelation 20. Alright, and it does not say that there won't be any darkness during this thousand year period. It's not in it's not there. You're adding to it. But one that promises there will be no darkness during this thousand year reign. It does not say that anywhere at all. I can't show you look there it isn't because it's not anywhere 
All right, now remember this verse in uh, Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, that's Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. This is the end of the world. The world that we are in right now. Just as it says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when it says, The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Okay, this is the same thing that we're reading here. For example, Sun be darkened, moon shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then so also, the same thing that we're reading in Second Peter chapter 3, when it says the heaven shall dissolve, you know, um, at the end of the world. The heavens which are, the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same were kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of un godly men the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up this is parallel whose face the earth and heaven fled away it's a big deal when jesus comes okay rain and what about us the saints who have placed our faith in him Christ will usher us into this new realm, assigning each of us our duty posts. It's an intriguing period, one where... I don't know what he's talking about. Christ is going to assign us our duty posts? That's just made up. Completely made up. Okay. Mortals and mortals will share the same earth. Imagine a oh, world where this whoa, period, whoa, one where this that? new realm, assigning each of us our duty posts. It's an intriguing period, one where immortals and mortals will share the same earth. One where mortals and immortals will share the same earth. Now why is that important? If there are mortals, then there is death. Alright, now let me say that again. If there are mortals, then there is death. Alright. Picture a world free of death, sorrow, and pain. A world of peace, prosperity, and longevity. Think about this. He's still describing this thousand year period. Lives in harmony. Picture a world free of death, sorrow. He's saying, the claim that he's making is that there will be mortal people living in peace with no death. That's not in the scripture at all. That's a bizarre religion. An entirely different religion separate from the Bible. One where immortals and mortals will share the same earth. Imagine a world where diseases are non-existent, where men and women live... So, think about this. What kind of world is there where mortals live among immortals? Think about that. And now, think about this. Aren't we living in that world right now? Those of us that are saved are immortal. We have everlasting life right now. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 11. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
right now we are immortal those of us that are born of God have eternal life right now therefore we more we we immortals are living with mortals all right of long and fulfilling lives much like in the beginning a world where the wild nature of animals is tamed and they return to eating straw picture a lamb coexisting peacefully with a lion neither fearing the other in this bare new world, Christ will assign duties to all believers, immortal and mortal alike, making for an intriguing coexistence. This marks the arrival of the millennial reign, an era of profound transformation and divine mystery. But remember, this is just the beginning of our journey into the millennial reign of Christ. There's so much more to explore, so many more mysteries to unravel. It will not only be marked by extended lifespans, but also by an explosion of population growth explosion of population growth all right again this is completely foreign to the word of god it's unbelievable i understand look i get it this is the most popular view in the world today Probably 99.9% .9 of the churches all across the world teach this. My point is that this is contrary to the Word of God. Okay, for in the resurrection. So how can you make this claim that Christ comes and people are resurrected into their immortal bodies and there is only be marked by extended lifespans but also by an explosion of population growth an explosion of population growth now i call that dirty sex okay so his claim is that people will be having dirty sex in their immortal bodies that's the claim and it doesn't get talked about enough all right so that's why i'm talking about it i want to show examples so that somebody might see it this stuff is bizarre in Matthew 22, verse 34, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. In other words, they're not having, we're not having children after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. He, I mean, wow. There's a better world, a much better world than this, than this sexual world that we live in yeah I think all oh, sex, sex is so great well there's a better world that waits for us much better than sex okay I, there are countless verses really I mean just I could go on and on and on let's do one though Flee also youthful lust. Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty two. Okay? Flee also youthful lust. In first John chapter two for all that is in the world Now let me start here. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. 
and the world passes away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever.